Waller um, decided to retire from the NFL, uh, released a statement in a YouTube video. I guess that's where we are now in 2024, where you know players retire and they take it to their own social media to let everyone know about it. First, who was on it were like the the reporters and Ian Rappaport and Adam Schefter first, but uh, a video did come out where Waller doesn't just talk about the tire retirement, just takes the stage to himself to discuss like every possible thing. Um, if you really want to go to his YouTube channel and sort through that almost 30 minute video, but some stuff that we did want to talk about that did arise from that, obviously like the retirement's already known. We, we already previewed and we'll do it again a little bit about the future for the Giants, the tight end position and with Wall retiring, how much do we care about missing him? We'll get into all that a little bit later, but here's actually some new stuff. Obviously, if you want to hear that, you can go to the last episode, but we will mention it later. So Waller addressed um, his decision, but also talked about a reason to reevaluate his decision of retiring. Like what kind of led to this point in time? Because before whatever this incident was that occurred medically, he didn't have this in the front of his head. So Waller didn't really explain exactly what the condition was, but just described a story for most of the video. So midway through the season, while he was away from the team, a hamstring injury that he suffered in week eight against the Jets, it was on October 29th. Um, after the game, he got hurt at the game. The following week, the Giants were playing the Raiders in Vegas. He was shooting a music video in South Jersey. He came home to his condo, and he started feeling chills on the drive back. Now, Waller said he experienced COVID two times before that, very similar symptoms. It was a pain for him, but he's like, it's all right. It's another COVID fever situation. We'll get through it. He gets back to his condo. Once he gets inside his condo, he tries to sleep. He cannot physically sleep um, as he kind of feels his body start shaking to where he's going to go unconscious. So uh, he actually started watching like a podcast or something on his TV to just keep him awake from like jolting back and forth. Uh, not going unconscious. And uh, basically, these chills and stuff became uncontrollably, you know, violently um, and or violently uncontrollably, I guess. Um, and then Waller just said he couldn't breathe. So what he did the next morning when he woke up, he ended up calling 911. He put like a shoe to stop the door, you know, to keep it open so they can come in. And he was taking deep breaths. And in between each deep breath, he was kind of telling uh, the 911 operator where he was. Um, so obviously the medics arrived. He ended up spending three and a half days in the hospital. And um, the situation, obviously, he called his wife at the time, Kelsey Plum. Now they're divorced. We know about that whole thing. We talked about that last episode with the song and all that nature. And he also called his mom. And he credits his mom, obviously, with helping him through his addiction uh, and overdosing that he had numerous amount of times, or not numerous, but a few times years ago when he was, you know, uh, very addicted to drugs. So he was kind of talking about how the 911 operator called her and he felt terrible because it's like, oh, another 911 call that she's getting. Um, so all of that being said, in short, was one of the pivotal reasons to why, I don't want to say Darren Waller made this decision, but why the thoughts about retiring and moving on to another part of his life or valuing life itself more than football seems to come into his mind, um, I guess, and become more prevalent this offseason. And I feel like this is news, honestly, Alex, that we've been waiting for all offseason was that he's going to retire. I feel like it was really assumed uh, by the New York Giants by taking Theo Johnson in the fourth round. And just us in general, I don't know about the entire Giants community, I can't speak for them, but I think between the two of us, we kind of just knew since March that this was honestly going to be uh, a possibility, if not going to become reality, uh, become reality at some point. I guess getting to the to the retirement itself and the reasons for the retirement before we talk about the implications elsewhere, I do think from his point of view, obviously, uh, you know, we don't know all the details, whatever, but based on what he said publicly and everything that it seems like is going on in his life, obviously retiring absolutely seems like the right solution for him uh, personally. And uh, that's not something that I think any Giants fan should hold against him uh, based on everything that he's going through, especially now uh, that we're hearing more of his side of the story here uh, on his YouTube video. Um, obviously the divorce now, these health issues, whatever, it, uh, you know, obviously the, I guess the looming over his head of his previous drug issues, uh, you know, there's definitely a lot that went on in his life and, uh, you know, they're more important than football uh, and more important that the mon than the money that he could make from football as well. So I think those are two very important points. But uh, I guess transitioning a little bit more 
uh, to the impact for the Giants uh, and what this all means. Obviously, the Giants traded a third-round pick for him uh, last offseason. Uh, everyone thought he was going to be the number one guy for the Giants. He was going to be uh, kind of a replacement for a number one receiver. Giants obviously, uh, you know, have a very bad season. Uh, Darren Waller, uh, you know, is injured quite a bit and also doesn't meet expectations. Uh, and now one year later, he is retiring. And I think a lot of people are saying, you know, Joe Shane really messed up this trade. This was a bad trade. This is a terrible trade. Of course, in hindsight, when we look back at when the trade was made, everyone was saying it was a steal. Um, but I think personally, uh, the Giants didn't make a bad trade here necessarily just because you cannot predict life events uh, that are going to happen in the future. You cannot predict that he's going to get a divorce. You cannot predict the health issues that he faced during the season, at least to those extremes. So, um, yeah, that's why I said to those extremes, Josh. I know <laughs> I just saw your, your face there. So um, that's why I mentioned that word specifically. But there's certain things that I think the Giants could not have predicted here. And um, it was just a lot of bad luck, I think, uh, which just was generally happening all of last season. Just a lot of bad luck. Uh, in addition to just some bad execution. Yeah, so to those extremes, yes, but like obviously a hamstring injury could definitely have been expected from Waller due to his pass yeah. of injury history um, prior to the 2020 season where he really came onto the scene and put himself in the conversation for one of the top three names in the tight end position uh, with, you know, Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, et cetera. But with Waller gone, so, you know, we can go to that part now, obviously, because that, that's where we're at. Um, his future remains unknown. Uh, he, he doesn't know what he's going to do. Obviously, it's not going to be playing football. And I think exactly to your point, Alex, I think it is honestly the best decision for him, especially given the scenarios and situations going on in his life. He's going to have some thinking to do. We'll have to see where he ends up. Maybe a, a media guy in the future. I don't know. Maybe he'll be calling some games. Who knows what he does, whatever he does. Obviously, we wish him the best. And after watching that video, I think really full circle, whether you're a fan of Darren Waller, a fan of him on the Giants, a fan of the Giants uh, as a team, you have to put the, the team aside as much as you can because with his situation and after the video, I really did understand that it was best for him to retire because even if he did play, and I talked about this last week, Alex, if he decided, yeah, I'm going to come back, I think even the Giants might have thought something in their heads because when he's going through a divorce and things of his past and injury history, they might even debate, like, is this really right for you? Like, are you sure you want to come back? So I think for both parties, this was the right decision. Okay, now I'll go to the Giants. Um, Third-year tight end Daniel Bellinger is projected to be the number one for the New York Giants. He started 13 games last season, 25 catches, 255 yards. Sure, the stats don't really speak for how good Daniel Bellinger's potential can be. I wouldn't say it's like a high ceiling, but I would say he can develop and be a pretty good, decent, average to above average tight end in the NFL. Uh, behind him is going to be, I would I would say, is second in command to Theo John Theo Johnson should be in the number two yeah. tight end. I know he's just a rookie, and I know the Giants signed a couple of veterans, which I'll get into in a, in a second now, so I'll let you chime in. But I, I think that, Theo Johnson, just because of the reasoning for drafting him in the fourth round the, with the assumption that Waller was going to retire, I think it's the right decision to get him play time, especially early in his career. We want these young guys to develop. Putting in Theo Johnson, starting him alongside Bellinger, I think is going to do that. Better than throwing in a guy who's in his late 20s or early 30s who has had time in the NFL. He's a veteran. You know, these guys are veterans at that point. I'll get into those guys in, in a couple minutes. But Alex, go ahead. Yeah, all I was going to say is I think – Daniel Bellinger is the main, besides Darren Waller, uh, Darren Waller, of course, with his, you know, the issues he's facing. But the other guy who was heavily impacted by this whole saga overall over the past year has been Daniel Bellinger. Uh, you know, we obviously see a lot of big second year leaps uh, by rookies, uh, you know, who when they go into their second year, they drastically improve with a full off season uh, on their hands. And Daniel Bellinger didn't really get a fair shot at things. And I think his development was spurred. Um, you know, in some, in some capacity for sure, uh, being, you know, put in a more, um, you know, backdoor role, uh, behind Darren Waller. And now, uh, he's being thrown back into the front, uh, with Darren Waller gone. So, uh, an interesting cycle of events for his young career so far. And I'm interested to see how he does, um, you know, now that, you know, the pressure's back on his shoulders, uh, somewhat with Darren Waller 
uh, not being the main face of the position. And like you said, Theo Johnson, he has a lot of potential. He is just a rookie. So we're going to see how he ends up doing. And uh, like you're about to mention, a couple of veteran guys who are, you know, can do a part, uh, but aren't going to be uh, playmakers, I think, going down the field like Theo Johnson definitely can be. And like we've seen flashes of Daniel Bellinger being. And, and by the way, Vic, these are big guys playing our tight end position that can really go up and contest for footballs and be heavy and aggressive players. Both Bellinger and Johnson have a similar height and weight. Both players are 6'6". I think um, Bellinger is the one who's a little bit skinnier. He's like 5 to 10 pounds skinnier than Johnson. But it, it, that doesn't even matter because you're 6'6 going up for a ball you know, with a middle linebacker or a safety or a cornerback. You know, most likely you're going to be able to make that catch and get some yards after catch as well. Uh, so obviously, look forward to those guys as they're going to be big, tall targets for our or for our quarterback in whether that's Drew Lock or Daniel Jones. Uh, in the start of the season, it'll be Daniel Jones at least. And then the two guys that Alex was mentioning, the veterans, Jack Stahl, who's in his late twenties, coming from the Philadelphia Eagles, and then behind him, Chris Manhurts, who's been with. A few teams, I, the Cardinals in there, the Panthers for four years, and then most recently with the Denver Broncos. Those guys, I do not believe, will making will be making a huge contribution to this New York Giants team. I even think that one of them is going to get cut come week one. Um, if I were going to choose a toss-up between both of them, I'd say it's Manhurts. Jack Stahl has more experience. Jack Stahl is the younger player, and he's the better blocker out of both of them. So if the Giants need blocking and they're looking for Theo Johnson and um, – uh, Daniel Bellinger, excuse me, to be passing threats. They'll have to keep Saul around. Manhurts can obviously stick around too if they place him on the practice squad. If he's, I don't know, uh, how do I say this? Not good enough to be swiped up by another team by placing him on the practice squad. We'll have to see uh, what happens there. And that'll be, you know, later in time when we talk about that. And also, I guess a little preview to when we do our um, pre training cramp, uh, pre training camp 53 man roster predictions, because that'll be coming up. Sooner than later, I mean, it's already – our summer's flying by, Alex. It's already mid-June. So, honestly, that will be coming to you sooner than later, end of the month, the next couple of weeks. Who knows? We'll have to figure that out. But um, I guess, yeah, tight end position preview to that. Yeah, it's crazy how fast uh, summer's flying by. But like you said, yeah, there's going to be a big training camp battle at the tight end position. They probably only take three, maybe four. Uh, and I think you've got five guys there uh, that are definitely going to be – um, fighting for that spotting guys who maybe don't have as big of a gap between them as some other positions. So it'll definitely be interesting to watch.